the Maya have clung tenaciously to many aspects of the old culture. In the highlands of Chiapas and Guatemala, their unique dress not only defines them as Maya, but identifies the particular village where they live. It is said that when a Maya woman puts on her traditional blouse, called a wipil, her head emerges at the very center of a world woven from dreams, just as the great tree of life emerges from the earth. In the highlands of Chiapas, Mexico, Chip Morris has been working with weavers for 20 years. The weavers have always said that their designs come from the beginning of the world, meaning the beginning of their culture. When I started looking at the archaeology of the sculptures and the statues, the things that show what the weaving was like, there are a number that are all but identical to the weavings of today. What's in the designs is a map of the Maya world, but not the surface of the earth, not where we are standing now, but it's the dream world. It's that world where the gods are, where the, the beings that control rain, where Angel, the lightning bolt, lives. There are no trucks. There are no houses on a, on a blouse. It's all images of that sacred universe that creates rain, that creates life, that maintains the world. In a world where the line between the secular and the sacred is almost imperceptible, everything is more than it seems. Pyramids symbolize sacred mountains where the ancestors dwell. Doors represent the mouths of caves, passageways into the mountain's dangerous underworld. The Maya believed they went to that underworld when they died. They called it Xibalba. It was the place of fright, a watery realm of disease and decay that ordinary people had little hope of escaping. How the Maya treated their dead is being investigated here at a site 130 miles north of Copan. These are the ruins of a city called Caracol. Once it was a prosperous administrative center. Today it's remarkable for the scores of tombs discovered here. I think we leave the rest of this to remove the rocks. Okay. Arlen Chase is a pottery expert. Diane Chase is an authority on human bones. They're trying to understand how the Maya thought about death. Okay. Oh, this is nice, Arlen. This is real nice. We've definitely got a royal tomb here. Ordinary people were usually buried under the floors of their houses. But the vessels are nice and they're in good shape. The elite were placed in tombs. This polychrome over here um, is in better shape on the back than the front side. What about the bone? Bone? There's a lot of bones. There are uh, at least two individuals whose heads are to the south. They're in pretty good shape. You know, someone else's legs are up in this corner. It doesn't go with either one of the first two individuals. It's, it's not the, the man and the, the possible woman. It's somebody different. It wasn't uncommon for the Maya to bury more than one family member in the same space. I like to think of it more like a, um, a family mausoleum, where grandpa may have died and you place him inside first. Uh, grandma dies, you put her inside too. Uh, a number of years pass and um, maybe the son or daughter dies. You might move grandpa to the side a little bit, uh, grandma too, and stick the son in. Um, and a little bit further along, a few more people in the family die. And eventually the mausoleum has quite a lot of bone material inside. 
For archaeologists, tombs are like time capsules. The objects buried with the dead sometimes yield precise dates and names. These help to fill out our picture of how the ancient Maya lived. And sometimes what they find is simply beautiful. Like the tombs at Caracol, the buildings of Copan contain their share of buried history. But finding it has often been an elusive undertaking. Honduran archaeologist Ricardo Argosia has been working at Copan since 1978. My primary interest was finding out what happened to these people. It's something that's part of my heritage too. It's something that's part of my country. And I grew up, I mean, I wasn't very young when I came to these ruins the first time, but uh, it impacted me. And it was a fascinating issue, a question that you were always thinking about. What happened to these people? Who were they? How did they do the things they did? Agosia has been excavating a temple pyramid that may tell us more about how the people of Copan lived. Temple 16 is a typical royal structure in terms of its construction, and therein lies the archaeologists' challenge. For the Maya, certain spaces were sacred, so they built their temples one on top of another. Workers would collapse the upper levels of an existing structure, encase what was left with heavy fill, and build a new structure around it. As Agursia's crew remove the fill, they create a labyrinth of tunnels. Working in tunnels it tends to be very confusing. You're working like in three dimensions, you know, you're going up, down, sideways, in between. And oftentimes you get lost and you can't really understand what you're looking at. The flat wall on the left used to be the outer wall of an older temple. Only by following its walls to their ends can Agursia determine the building's original dimensions. I only traveled a short distance, and bingo, we hit another wall. It still goes farther off, towards the south. So we then tried going up to see whether we had the bottom part of a substructure or the higher part of it, and started going up. And you can see here the terraces going up, or what was a very large pyramid. It goes up, uh, as far as we've traced it, eight stories high, and uh, each one of them curving back and going further up. What Agursia found next was totally unexpected. There was yet a third structure inside the first two, but this one was different. The building Agursia calls Rosalila was perfectly preserved. The loose dirt was removed, exposing a set of giant masks still tinged with traces of the original paint. Most of the masks we found before were perhaps a meter or two tall and would extend as much as five, six meters. But uh, these masks just kept going and going and going and to this moment we still haven't found the end of them. Adorned with brightly painted sculpture, Rosalila once crowned the highest point in Copan. Framing the central doorway, two giant birds face the setting sun. Above them, undulating serpents extend their bodies toward the sky. For the archaeologists, the careful treatment given Rosalila poses a question. We're all just itching to know what Rosalila is all about. Why was it left there for 150 years and nobody touched it other than to maintain it? Why was it buried intact? They didn't touch any of it when they buried it. All the rest of them they smashed to pieces to build something bigger and better over it. Why was it so revered that it had to be mummified when it was buried? 
And most of all, what's inside of it? What is that thing housing? And that's what we're hoping Ricardo will find. But before any new discoveries are made, the rainy season descends on Copan. The archaeologists return home and all excavations are suspended until it ends. <laughs>